Ladies and gents, welcome to Relax Running. I'm Tyson Popplestone, the head coach here. Today, I wanted to take some time to answer a question which is becoming really popular in recent months, and that is, how do we implement the Norwegian method for endurance sports into our own running week? Now, if you don't know what the Norwegian method is, go and watch this video first, and then once you've watched that, you understand what it is and why it's become so popular, come back and figure out with me how it is we can implement the training style into your own week. Now, regardless of where you're at in your own running, I wanted to let you know before we get into the video, Relax Running offers personalized one-to-one coaching regardless of your fitness levels or your running goals. If you're a runner, a triathlete, or an athlete from a running-based sport needing some guidance with how to structure your training to hit the goals that you're aiming at, hit the link in the description to this video to find out how we can help you specifically. But for now, let's get on with how to implement the Norwegian method into our own training week. All right, step number one, we wanna go and get you a lactate threshold test. We wanna find out what your aerobic and anaerobic threshold levels are because so much of the rest of your week is designed around these numbers. Now, the best way for you to figure out where you can get this done is to simply Google, where in my area can I get a lactate threshold test done? Based on these numbers, it's gonna give us a really accurate foundation to structure the intensity and the focus of each session in our week around. Truth is, it's really helpful when it comes to the intensity side of the Norwegian method to figure out what is the event that you're training for. Obviously, the high intensity parts of your week are gonna be different if you're an 800 meter runner as opposed to a marathon runner. So figure out, hey, what's your goal? What's your event? And then later in the video, we can talk a little more around the intensity levels that you'll hit for the harder parts of your training week. Once you've got that first step in place, it makes this second step a lot easier. We wanna figure out how do we actually structure our training week around the information that we've been given in step one. If you really wanted to boil down what the Norwegian method is, a lot of people say it's very similar to the 80-20 training method. Now, the truth is, on the surface, this is really true. It's just got the science and the data to be able to support the work efforts that you're putting in. But if you look at this, essentially 80% of your work is going to be done at zone two, and then the other 20% of your work is going to be done at more intense levels. Now, obviously this example that I'm about to give you is very generic, but if you're looking at a marathon runner who is implementing this style of training into their week, it might look something like this. On Sunday, you'll go out for a long, slow, easy run. Monday, a recovery run, nice and relaxed, conversational. Tuesday, you might decide to incorporate some higher intensity intervals. If you're a marathon runner, it could be something like 10 times three minutes. If you're an 800 meter runner or a 1500 meter runner, that could be as short as one minute efforts. Now, we're gonna get into how you're actually monitoring this in just a moment, but this is where you see some of the intensity start to come in. On a Wednesday, you'll go out and do a middle long distance, maybe it's 60 to 70 minutes. The truth is, it depends on your event, your fitness, your current goals. Thursday, if you didn't do something more intense on a Tuesday, you could incorporate some of those reps. Friday is a cross training day or a relatively easy jog. And then Saturday, you might go out for a longer, easier run, but over some hills where you're obviously ticking off the aerobic training and you're also getting the heart rate to spike little bits here and there as you're going up those hills. Now, this is definitely not a prescription for any athletes. This is simply just a look at how that training week might look if you're incorporating the Norwegian method into your own training week. Step number three, how do we actually monitor the levels that we're hitting? Well, the truth is, because this is a science, it's really beneficial to have the tools to assist you in monitoring the progress that you're making and making sure you're pushing yourself hard enough or holding yourself back to a level that you should be on that particular day. And the way that we do that is through, first of all, getting yourself a blood lactate meter and then getting yourself some lactate strips. Now, part of the reason for that is so much of this is very expensive. You can pay a whole heap of money to get both of the things that I've just mentioned. But if you've got the access to it, it's really beneficial both on interval days to make sure that you're not allowing your lactate levels to get too high and also on the aerobic days for the same reason. The opposite is also true. Every now and then, it can be helpful just to encourage you to hit a certain point based on what it is that you're trying to hit 
on that particular session. Now, as I mentioned, this is a science and these tools are most effective, but not all of us have the money to be able to go out and throw at something like this. So if you don't, don't stress, you can still be guided by your basic heart rate levels. If you have an idea of what each zone of your training is in terms of heart rate, that's where you can start to structure your sessions around that. And just do your best to monitor and be disciplined with how hard and how easy you're going on the scheduled days. Because if you start to push the easy runs too hard and make the hard runs too easy, we're not gonna be striking the balance that the Norwegian method encourages for the training of the athletes that are taking part in it. And the fourth thing we're gonna go back and do is the adaptation and progression test. How do we do this? Well, once you've been taking part in this method for a little while, maybe once every six months or once every 12 months, you can go back and get yourself a lactate threshold test again. Based on what those numbers say is gonna dictate how we go going forward from here in terms of intensity, in terms of pace, and obviously, Take some time to constantly check in with what the goals of your running currently are and what that means in terms of how you hit the intensity of each particular session. Now, I know a video like this can often leave you with more questions than answers, and that's the beauty of this method. If you're in